All right, we're going to add a few more form elements, which will cover the basics, and then we'll add a few finishing touches to this web form. So let's add another break here. I'll add a break tag. And this next set of form fields, we'll put in another field set to kind of illustrate how you can use these field sets to separate your data. So we'll add a field set tag. I'll open it and close it right here. And inside of here, I'll add the legend tag. And maybe we'll call this subscription details or something. Okay, now inside of this field set, we'll add a couple more form elements. So let's do a break tag right here. Actually, I guess we don't need a break tag. We already did one right above right here. So we should just be able to add our tag. Um, this one's going to be a checkbox type of field. So we're going to say input type equals checkbox name equals and maybe we'll call this one subscribe and uh, we actually need to get our label. I forgot about the label. So right above this we'll add the label. So we'll say label for equals subscribe and subscribe Subscribe, close the label, and let's save and refresh and see where we're at. So you can see that there's this other uh, field set. Now, one of the issues here is I've got this field set down here inside of the other field set, which I probably don't want to. So let's go fix that. The reason I didn't notice that is because I hit return a bunch of times and to put this code down here. So I need to cut this out and delete all this empty space and this is going to go below there so we'll save and refresh that now that's down there on its own line and we could probably use another break tag right before in between these two just to push those apart a little bit and there's my subscribe checkbox so they can either maybe subscribe to a newsletter or not and that's how a checkbox works you can have multiple checkboxes if you want just make sure they all have the same name if they're in a checkbox group. The difference between a radio button and a checkbox is radio buttons allow for one selection out of many options, where checkboxes allow for multiple selections out of multiple options. Okay, let's do another tag. We'll do a break tag here. And this next tag we're gonna do is gonna be a password if the user is going to maybe create a password for your site when they signed up or something. So we'll do a label. Now I'm gonna get lazy now and just copy and paste here. And we'll call this one password and password. And this one is an input type equals password. And we'll just uh, say name equals password. Let's save and refresh. And that's looking pretty good, except it looks like my um, legend is messed up. Let's see, where did that go? Oh, I did not close it. It needs a closing legend tag. Um, you'll see I'll, I'll make little mistakes like this all the time, and that's really common. And that's why it's nice to use an editor like this that actually will highlight errors. Dreamweaver, even this program does. I just don't have them turned on. And some other programs that you use will actually highlight a line or put a little X over here if that line seems off to help you fix your errors as you're coding. So I would definitely leverage those features, but I kind of want to do everything by hand so you can kind of see how the how that works. So the password field, there it is now, and you can see it's just adds bullets when you type. Now, one important thing to know about the password fields, it's not actually secure. Just because there's bullets here doesn't mean it's secure. When you click submit, it takes whatever you typed in and just sends it across the internet in plain text. So if I type in Andrew and hit submit, it's just going to submit the words Andrew. So you need to make sure whenever you're doing sensitive data to always make sure you have the HTTPS and the little lock symbol up in your web browser to make sure that they're sending that data over a secure co connection. All right, that's the way the password field works. We'll do one more type of input. So let's do another break tag here and we'll do another label. Label four equals zip. And maybe we're gonna have them enter in their zip code. 
And we'll do this one just to illustrate a few more of the attributes of the input tag. So input type equals, I'm just gonna do a regular text, just like we did way up here with our first name, way up at the top here, similar tag there. We'll call this one, uh, oops, name equals zip. And let's save and refresh. So there's the zip code, but maybe I happen to know that zip codes are a certain, you can either do the nine digit or the five digit zip codes. And so one of the properties here inside of the input, one of the attributes is the ability to limit the amount of characters that are typed in. And that's done with this one called max length equals, and I can set that to five, and that will only allow the user to type in five characters. You can kind of hear me typing. It won't let me type anything beyond five. And another one here is called size. I can say size equals five. And that sets the size or kind of the width of this input field to a certain width. And we can also control the width and size and style of all these things with CSS as well. But I just wanted to illustrate just a couple more of those um, attributes that are available on some of these tags that we haven't covered thus far. So let's, uh, let's make these consistent, do our colon space like we've been doing earlier. Save and refresh. Now this form is pretty much done. The only thing that's missing is the ability to submit. I can't submit all the data. I can type it all in and fill everything out, but I can't submit. So let's add in the last portion here of the, the form, which is our submit button. And it's pretty simple. It's just input type equals submit. And we can say, value equals submit, save and refresh. And that adds the submit button. And that's it. As soon as I click submit, I can now submit the form. Once this is in place, I'm good to go. If I don't want it to say submit, I could, I can always say uh, click me. You can put whatever you want inside of the value here and that will appear inside of the button on the web browser. So I'll just put that back to submit. And now this form would be considered complete. So again, let's review a couple of things and uh, we'll talk about the method in our next video.